of tonight's Mass is for the repose of the souls of Tom and Catherine Bergelson and Kathy Hills. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As you come before the Lord in this vigil of Mary, the Mother of God, we ask God's mercy and healing in our lives. You were sent to heal the cry of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. And on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of Blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom you were found worthy to receive the author of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God bless us in his mercy. May God bless us in his mercy. 
May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. May God bless us in his mercy. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the people's inequity. The nations on the earth you guide. May God bless us in his mercy. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. May God bless us in his mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Today we celebrate the <clears throat> solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. She has many titles. That is uh, one of the biggies. The Mother of God, the Ark of the New Covenant, Queen of Heaven and Earth. And I was reading in uh, uh, this uh, thing on exorcisms, not the scary stuff, but the theological stuff and things like that. And, but then there's a group of exorcists around the world that have a newsletter. I'm not one of them, by the way, but uh, uh, I heard one talking about it. And they, they made notes of, when they were doing exorcisms, comments that were made about Mary by the demons. They all hate her. <laughs> and for Lucifer, it was one thing that God became man. He didn't like that at all, that he would become a human, uh, human nature. But what really ticked him off was that this woman was going to become his mother. And she wasn't God. She was a human being, just like us, a creature, born without sin or even the stain of sin. And that she was going to become queen and mother of heaven and earth, queen of angels. And they said, apparently Lucifer said, 
I would not tolerate a creature being above me. And it would help. So it tells you about Mary, though, what God chose for her. And a, a lot of times when God opens our heart to him, uh, especially in a major way, it can be uh, um, sort of unsettling in one sense, but uh, a whole new world. Then we have to rethink who, who is God? You know, my life when I went through a bunch of stuff and then I had to, all of a sudden, the God of my understanding. And I thought, who's that? <laughs> I have all this training in theology and tell you a lot about God, but who is God to me? And how do I relate to God? And that's a whole different ballgame then. And so for Mary and Joseph and uh, people at the time, here comes the Messiah, and they've been preaching about the coming of the Messiah when he comes, but the whole image they had at the time that when the Messiah comes, he will be not only king, but he will be king over the entire world. The whole order of this world will change, and God will reign here on earth. And the whole concept that that's not the way it's going to be, that there'll be a new heavens and a new earth, and that the king, uh, comes to you as a baby, and later on, as the Messiah into Jerusalem, riding on a coal, in a humble way. Nobody expected this. And you wonder, even Jesus, uh, Joseph and Mary, I'm sure it was, it had to be a shock to them. Uh, it never, as it had heard of before, it never will be heard of again. That God chose a creature, a woman, from the moment of her conception in her mother's womb to be conceived without original sin or even the stain of sin and be full of grace. Perfect. Why? So that when the word of God came down from heaven and but through Mary's yes took on flesh in her womb and was born in God incarnate, well, where God is, sin cannot exist, even the stain of sin. So when the Word of God took on flesh in Mary's womb, if there had even been any stain of sin, they probably would have just destroyed Mary. But she was completely sinless. But she had to learn just like we did. We do. We can have our concept of God, you know, powerful God and righteous God, and a God who destroys our enemies, God was hanging a sword over our head. You saw what I did to them, you better not screw up. A lot of times we have that type of a God, and really what it is is an idol. We're making an idol. We're making God something that he's not. And so for Mary and Joseph, they had their growth. First of all, okay, so here you have this baby born into the world who's the son of God. Mary and Joseph, I mean, I'm sure just in awe, they can't, comfort, they can't wrap their minds around this, but the, even though the angel Gabriel's come to Mary, and she knows she has had no relations with a man, and the angel said it's through the Holy Spirit that this child will be born. But still they're contemplating it. And then, who does, who do the angels and God through his grace draw to this major scene? Not King Herod, the king of the Jews, not the Pharisees, not the Sadducees. Nobody, like the important people of religion are there. Who comes? The shepherds. The angels appear to them in the night sky. Who were the shepherds? Obviously they were shepherding sheep and goats and things. But they were considered uh, sort of the rough and tumble, not godly at all. And had considered to have no real relationship with God. Their life was just as whatever. But they didn't count. Well, they're the ones that the angels appear to. And they're the ones that the angels say, in the manger you will find him. And draw these shepherds to the manger. Then next to Sunday they'll have the Feast of Epiphany, the three kings from the Orient. 
coming from the east. They're not Jewish. They're not Christian, obviously. Whatever religion they are, or my religion, or astrologers. And they're Paul. And so you have this conglomeration of Joseph, the son of the line of David. So Jesus is of the line of David, fulfilling all the prophecies. Mary, the child shall be born of the virgin. Mary. Then you have these groups that are rejected by society and religion are called to the manger. Why? They're to show us not only the universality of Christ, but that God is love. And he calls all people. And can you imagine? Uh, and this is very reflected on all these things. Kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. She's having to piece together as any mother would. Who is this child that was born to me? Is every child born with a personality? Um, I know a friend of mine, she just had a, a child, and she said, and the baby was right on time. Right? It was supposed to be coming, boom. And she's not that way at all. I said, well, get ready, because that's probably his personality, too. And so the Jesus, Mary's learning his personality. And so Joseph's just in awe. He's not even speaking. Mary probably isn't either, too, but, you know, as a mother, she's piecing together all these things. She's thinking of the angel coming. She's thinking of her life before the angel, her relationship with God. She's thinking of the angel. She's thinking of the yes she said. She's thinking of how that worked out between her and Joseph with this revelation that they're all learning at the same time. The child is born. Now she's looking at it. Somebody she knows is from God, obviously. And then he is to be called Jesus, and he will save us from our sins. And then these people come to the manger who are considered outcasts. Where's the big shots? <laughs> Where's the church that say, hey, here he is? Aren't there people that are outcasts? So Mary's watching these shepherds come in and these kings from the east. And they're all acknowledging what she is experiencing, saying it's true, it's true. And that's why it says that Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. And so as, as the child grew, so Mary grew. She grew, grew in her understanding of who this child is and how to relate to this child and who she is in relationship to this child. But here you have, God comes in a way that surprises all of us. God comes in a most vulnerable way, a baby. So God is calling, what do you do when you see a baby? Who doesn't love to look at a baby? You know, oh, it's the cutest baby I've ever seen. I see it every time. And so, here they are, you're looking at this baby that the angels said, glory to God in the highest. And God is drawing them into a love relationship with him because it's so easy, because he's just this little baby. <coughs> and he's the triune God. And so in our relationship with God, not to be afraid to come for him, because he presents himself to us as the baby, the baby Jesus. In his vulnerability, he wants us to love him. And so he humbles himself to the point where you can look at him and say, who could love him? He's a little baby. And so in our relationship with God and with Mary, we pray that through her prayers as mother of the church, queen of heaven and earth, and of all the angels, that she can help us understand this child who is the redeemer, the son of God.
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Now we turn to the Father of the life of the world to come, asking to hear our prayers and petitions. As we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop John, and for all who hold and teach the faith throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, especially this week for our president, our vice president, our senators, our representatives, our judicial branch, our state legislators, governors, mayors, and community leaders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have asked for our prayers, all those for whom we have promised to pray, for those who have no one to pray for them, and those in need of healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have passed in this life and the intention of this Mass, for Tom and Catherine Ferguson and Kathy Hills, that all may be rejoicing in the kingdom of heaven, the glory of God. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Number 308. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, 
that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the motherhood of the Blessed Virgin ever Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise, as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. We have received, we have received this heavenly sacrament of joy, O oh Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life, where we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Also, I, uh, the linings have been picking me up because they come from Rutland right through Hankinson on the way here. So I'm sorry if I ask anyone else, uh, you can disregard it. They'll get me for this Saturday. And then the following Saturday, the 9th, I think Father Gellin has the Mass. If not, I'll probably be able to drive right there. So either way, if I'm driving, I'll let you know so you can stay off the roads. Watch <laughs> out! <laughs> Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. Amen. Amen. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance and hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and in every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 205. Angels, we have heard of sweetly singing over the Shepherds, my history. 